Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today it's time for another ship, a carrier this time. It might surprise you to learn that I'm going to be building this Ravel HMS Ark Royal, which comes with a tribal class destroyer as an escort. You've got to protect your carrier. This was an impulse buy. The hobby shop suckered me in with an end of year sale, you know, promising savings. So I of course went and gave them all my money and didn't save anything. Not that I'm really complaining. I was sure this is an older kit, and I'm pretty sure it's actually the same one I built as a kid way back in the olden days, and for that reason my expectations are kind of low. The back of the box shows us some painted examples and a shot of some very neat looking sprues. Suspiciously neat. There are also some recommended paint colours, these are obviously Ravel paints. There's also a whole bunch of information in various languages. Inside the box you will find this bag full of plastic bits. The individual sprues are, well, they're okay. At least in that all of the parts do seem to be present. The detail isn't the greatest, but at this scale it's a bit silly to expect extreme detail, especially from cheaper kits, and especially from older kits. I would say the detailing is okay. You can tell what the things are. It's not just flat slabs of plastic or something terrible like that. I'm not exactly sure how old this moulding is, but Scalemates would suggest the tool for this is from 1967, which is absurd. However, this box is from 2017. With that information it's not exactly surprising that there's quite a bit of flash, and the mould lines are going to take a significant chunk of time to remove. But it's buildable, I hope. So here's what's new in the box for 2017. The instructions, which I have to say are quite nice really. They've used some colour, and the diagrams for the 34 steps in this build are easy to understand and follow. There's also this safety advice sheet, so that we stay safe, and I totally definitely did read this. There's also this set of flags. This is just paper, I assume you cut these out and glue them together around a piece of rigging or a flagpole. And finally there's this decal sheet, also from 2017. That's good, even if the plastic isn't so great, at least the decals will be nice and fresh. I start by assembling Ark Royal's hull. This took a fair bit of work to remove the flash and burrs from sprue gates which was not at all unexpected. I then put the parts together, starting at the bow. I found I had to trim down the guide pins to get the parts to go all the way together. It seemed to fit well enough, so I added glue on the inside of the model. This is to try and minimise mess made by the glue. The Tamiya Extra Thin will seep into the gaps and weld the parts together. I figured it was probably a good idea to glue all the joins together slowly and one at a time, rather than trying to get everything together in one go. When the bow is bonded properly I add the support things, whatever you would call these, and do some test fitting with the lower part of the hull. It really didn't look promising. I then join the two sides together at the stern. This fit is a bit worse than at the front, but it does close without a massive gap. I did of course have to apply pressure to try and minimise it. I then slot the two pins in the lower hull through the holes in the central supporty thingies and fit the hull together. Right away you can see this isn't going to be a great fit, but I try to make the best of it by gluing small sections of the hull together and holding them in place, rather than trying to glue the entire thing together in one go. This is going to be a theme throughout this build. It was kind of time consuming and I'm sure I could have strapped it all together with rubber bands or something like that, but I feel like I'm better able to keep an eye on things while doing it in small steps like this. The result isn't the worst, the hull bottom is on, without any humongous gaps, but it's not great. I clean it up as best I can with my knife and emery boards. It's pretty messy and doesn't look very good at all, but I have certainly done worse. It's apparent at this point that I will need to do some filling. Rather than mix up some putty now, I figured I might as well begin working on the destroyer hull. That's almost definitely going to need some putty as well, and I might as well do them both at the same time. I glue the hull sides together first, starting at the bow. This is easy enough, though I am expecting this to go together like the carrier, with gaps. Next I glue the hull rear together. I'm using the work surface here to make sure things stay together fairly level. I then attach the lower hull a little bit at a time. And like the carrier, it does go on, but it's pretty gappy and bad looking. But since I'm going to fill that with putty, it's fine. I then try to fit the upper hull. This is where the swearing starts in my notes. The fit is pretty bad. 
and I found it very hard to get the deck level with the whole sides. It either sat too high or too low. I did a lot of fiddling and cleaning up and eventually tried to glue the deck in place. Long story short, I ended up losing my temper with it and stabbed the model with my sprue cutters. I immediately felt bad, but hey, free battle damage I guess. I could have just omitted that part of the video, but I know better than this and I know that I shouldn't take my frustrations out on models. I was having a bad day, but that's no excuse. And I just want to remind people of that. Take a breath and do something else if you're being griefed by little bits of plastic. This is what I ended up with after I came back to the model. There's a bit of damage, but it's not beyond repair. Maybe I could have just smashed the bow off. This destroyer is HMS Eskimo, which did have the front of the ship blown off at some point. I didn't film it because I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be, but I used green stuff to fill in the gaps on both the Eskimo and Ark Royal. I did do a quick tips video on filling gaps, not specifically on ships, but I feel like it's the same thing. You can find a link to that video in the upper right hand corner of the screen, or in the link in the video description. Let's get back to building Ark Royal, by giving it feet. Yes. It's not common knowledge, but this ship had feet, for standing on things, I guess. You just can't usually see them because they're below the waterline. Okay, the real reason to install these is so you can sit the ship upright without destroying the rudder and propellers, which I installed next. I start by gluing in the central screw. This is keyed, so it should fit into the little hole here. I found I had to enlarge the hole just a tiny bit to get this to fit. This propeller should be at a slightly downwards angle. I then attach the rudder, which goes into the hole just aft of that raised bit. Simple and easy. You can of course have your rudder turned whichever way you like, but it should be as straight vertically as you can make it. One propeller isn't enough for a ship like this, so I build the two propeller and shaft assemblies. This is again pretty simple. The worst part was trying to remove the mould lines from both parts without causing damage or losing them. There weren't any guide pins or anything on this, but I still managed to get the propeller on nice and neatly. I then glued both of these assemblies into place. I wasn't entirely sure if I'd glued them onto the correct side, and it was a little bit fiddly to get them into place. There was a bit more swearing at this point in my notes. My fingers were too fat, so I ended up doing a lot of nudging with my knife, but eventually I got all the bits in place and they look reasonable. I am sure that will drive the ship adequately. It's then time to put in these walls or bulkheads or whatever you might call these. These things are to stop you from seeing into the hull through the openings for the gun turrets. The first two are longer than the rest. You'll easily figure out which they are, and they go into place easily. Though I was a little concerned they might not have clearance for the deck. I'm sure that could be fixed easily if it were an issue though. There's another six similar parts and they come in two flavours, though don't eat them. Three of part two and three of part three. They've got a notch in them at different ends and conveniently they're numbered right on the part. Very thoughtful. Pay attention to the instructions. The first of these will go in behind the long one we installed previously. The remaining two should be installed on the opposite side of the hull towards the rear. Not especially tricky if you're paying attention, though I'm sure it would easily catch somebody out. The remaining three bulkhead things should then obviously go into the remaining slots behind the gun emplacements. I figured I might as well then install the gun turrets. Ark Royal has eight of these turrets, which carry two of these, I believe, 4.5 inch guns. These go into the gun emplacements, surprisingly enough. They're very simple to install. The only problem I have with these is how small the gun barrels are. They're very easy to break, and that makes it difficult to remove mold lines from them. Fortunately and surprisingly, the mold lines weren't too bad on these. Next, it's time to attach the deck. I would be lying if I said I was surprised to find out that this doesn't just fit into place. Though that would have been nice. The gap here is substantial, but there should be enough flex in the parts to make everything fit. I glue the deck down slowly in small sections, just as I did with the lower hull parts. It did take a fair bit of time, but eventually I got the deck into place. I kind of wonder how I managed to do this as a kid, or even if I did. I wish I had photos of that model, but I don't. That was back in the pre-digital camera days. Oh well, what matters is I got the deck on. It is a bit messy. I'll fix that with some more putty. But first, while the glue properly sets up, I go back to the destroyer. 
I attach the display stand, which is straightforward, just like on the carrier. I then assemble the Eskimo's two propellers and shafts. This has a guide pin to help with positioning. As with those on the carrier, the hard part was cleaning up the mould lines without breaking or dropping and losing the parts. I then glue these assemblies into place. Tweezers are highly recommended for this. It's pretty fiddly and I'm not entirely sure if I put these on the correct side, but the propellers are on and that's enough for me. I can then add the rudder. This should be quite helpful if the destroyer ever wants to alter course. Bit of potato quality footage there, but you can see that they're in place and it looks okay. Time for some above deck details. First, I install the forward turret. This goes into place easily enough. These turrets had a lot of flash on them and were very annoying to clean up, but hey, I got there in the end. I follow that with this deck part. The fit isn't super great, and it's probably not made any better by the distortion in the shape of the starboard bulkhead there. There is a little bit of lateral play in this part, so be careful and try to get it in the center. I think I got it close enough. Onto that deck, the second turret can be installed. It's just as easy as the first turret, just as annoying to remove the mold lines from. Once that deck was in place, I trimmed down the side of the superstructure here to make it look a little bit neater. A similar series of steps can then be done at the rear of the ship. The rear turret is glued into place, then a piece of deck goes on. This fits a little bit better than the forward part, though it still has a bit of lateral play in it, and it still needs pressure applied to try and minimise gaps. This is followed by the final turret. Easy. I then add what I'm assuming to be the bridge. This goes into place just like the other two deck parts. There's a pair of bars on the bottom to help guide positioning, and there's a little bit of play in it. I apply pressure to try and deal with the gaps, and it's on. I follow it with this thing, which is maybe a rangefinder? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. This was easy to install. Time for a mast. This goes together quite simply, like so. The guide pin is quite helpful, though I did still need to fiddle with it a fair bit to get it to line up properly. Not too hard, though. It then slots into the three holes in the hull here. I was kind of surprised by how easily this went into place. I then added glue so it doesn't just fall right out again. Next comes the forward exhaust funnel. This is made of two parts, which are keyed to make sure they go together properly. Unsurprisingly, a little pressure is needed to minimise the gaps, though it still doesn't quite look perfect. Nothing on this model is going to look perfect, I think. I install it anyway. It slots into this rectangular hole just behind the mast, and I add glue to make sure it stays there. You just can't trust funnels to stay where you put them. Lifeboats are next, and these were quite fiddly to get into place. Tweezers were helpful to a degree. The lifeboat does go into place eventually, and then I add some glue. The really annoying thing about these is that there's a sinkhole on the right side of the boat, which is the most visible side. Surely this could have been designed so that it was on the other side of the boat so as to be less obvious. The lifeboat on the starboard side goes into place a lot easier. It even looks better because there are no holes in the side of it. Next comes this platform. There's D-shaped keying on the bottom of this so you can't put it on backwards. Though it looks to me as though it wouldn't really matter if you did. I then assemble the second funnel. It doesn't quite go together as neatly as the first one, so I had to clean it up a little bit more. It does go into place reasonably well though. There's a bit of a gap around the base, but it might be hidden by additional lifeboats or maybe filled by paint. Behind that funnel I installed a torpedo launcher because who doesn't want a torpedo launcher? Jerks, that's who. There's not much to say about this, other than it goes into place easily and it's a torpedo launcher. Now, more lifeboats. This one is installed just like the other two, fortunately with no big hole in the side. The fourth one is a little bit different, and it sits right on the deck. Though it is a bit messy and it looks like there's a chunk missing from the bottom of the boat near its front. There's a separate little crane for this boat, or maybe it's for something else, I don't know. Either way, it goes into place very easily here. It's especially easy if you use tweezers. I then make a second mast, because one good mast deserves another, or something. This goes together easily. I put it aside to dry and then attach whatever this thing is. I don't think it's another rangefinder. Whatever it is, it's a thing. Next, I glue on this platform or crow's nest or whatever it is. The rounded end should face aft. Then I attach one of the life rafts. There are meant to be two of these, but I seem to have lost one at some point. 
I'm pretty sure it was on the sprue when I got it out of the box, but it must have been knocked off at some point. That's okay, we can just pretend some of the crew have taken one of the life rafts out on a joyride or something. I then add the rear mast. It was a little bit fiddly to install, but not overly difficult. Then come some finishing touches. First, this pole at the rear of the ship. Nothing especially noteworthy about installing this. This one is a bit of a problem though. I didn't realise the gap at the front of the hole was for this pole, so it's full of green stuff now. I cut down the block on the bottom of the pole, and then glued it in place anyway. It's probably not perfect, but oh well. There's a lot of other less than perfect parts on this ship as well. So that's HMS Eskimo done. Back to Ark Royal, which by this time has had a second batch of green stuff applied to it around the flight deck. I'm not sure if I've filled in the gaps perfectly realistically, but I can live with that. I attach these, I believe rangefinders, to the port side of the ship. They fit into the two rectangles cut into the side of the hull on the inside of the gun turrets towards either end of the ship, and they go on easily enough. When this thing sinks, you're going to want some lifeboats, so that's what I put on next. These go into place here on this protrusion on the side of the hull. There isn't really anything to guide these. Well, there are some rectangular bits for the boats to sit on, but you still need to fiddle around and get them into the correct position yourself. The boats should be facing forwards and you should be careful with the rear one. There needs to be space for the crane too. And that's what comes next. The crane has a U-shaped recess on the bottom. This allows for it to sit on the rectangular protrusion in between the two lifeboats. It goes into place fairly easily. I can see there might be issues if the rear lifeboat was a little bit further forward though, so be careful with that. Next comes a pair of octuple pom-pom gun mounts. I really like the name pom-pom guns. <laughs> pom-pom. I'm a child. These were very easy to install. They're not the most detailed parts, but you can sort of tell what they're meant to be. There's another pair of lifeboats and a crane on the starboard side of the ship, and they're installed pretty much the same way as those on the port side. There's also another rangefinder that goes in near those boats. I probably should have installed that before the boats. That might have made it a little bit less fiddly. I then install another three octuple pom-pom mounts. What a fun name. These go into place easily. I'm not really sure if these should be facing in any particular direction. Probably doesn't really matter. Now onto the superstructure. The main part of this comprises two parts. These have guide pins and are easily joined together, but as with a lot of the other parts, pressure is needed to minimise the gaps. Onto this goes a few walkway and deck parts. The first one I clip onto the exhaust funnel and slide it up. I apply glue and then slide the part back down into its correct position. Of course holding it in place while the glue bonds. For the next part, I apply glue first and then slide the walkway on. Again, pressure to minimise gaps. And then this piece of decking goes up on top here. These parts are still a little bit gappy and aren't really perfectly level, but it'll do. Next, another rangefinder, if that is indeed what these are. Other than the labelling on the sprue, you can tell this is the part to use here because its mounting is a bit longer and stands out a bit further from the model. Then another octo pom pom mount goes here. Simple, nothing to say about this really. The superstructure isn't the best looking, but it can be glued into place now. There's a couple of guides on the deck to help with positioning. Obviously the U-shaped part should match with the rounded end of the opening in the superstructure. I was able to get this into place without any major gaps forming, which is nice. Next I assemble this mast. I did do it wrong the first time, though it's not immediately obvious in the video, and I quickly fixed it before the glue set, so that's nice. I then slid this crow's nest thing down onto the mast and glued it into place. The rounded end should face the same way as the two bars that come off the mast. There's keying on the bottom that locks onto the bar to make sure this is on nice and straight. I then install this onto the superstructure and it went on surprisingly easily. It just needed a little bit of nudging to make sure it was something close to vertical. Then I put this whatever it is on top of the mast. Maybe this has something to do with radar, I don't know. It goes into place with no issue. Next I install this blast shield. I guess there probably wouldn't be many blasts. It looks like it's probably meant to protect the pom pom mount right next to it from crashing planes or something. And it goes on very easily. I then take this pile of crane arm um, things and attach them in the eight mounting points for them down either side of the hull. 
I'm not 100% sure what these are, but I think they're radio antenna pylons. It would seem they move them down so they're not in the way during flight operations. I can't imagine it would be especially healthy for the plane or the pilot to crash into one of them. They're easy enough to attach, just make sure that you get them nice and vertical, or horizontal if you choose to mount them in that position. I've obviously chosen the up position. The final touch would be planes. There are eight of these included. They're not the best looking, but it's obvious that they're planes, so I guess that's fine. I've seen examples of this where the builder has cut the wings off and reattached them in a folded up position, to represent planes that have just come out of the hangar deck. I've obviously not done that, but it's a cool idea and it's probably not too hard to do. I won't be gluing any planes down because that would interfere with painting, but I've sat one on the deck for demonstration purposes. And that's it. HMS Ark Royal and HMS Eskimo are now complete. As you can probably tell, I've primed these in black. I've used AK Interactive Primer and Microfiller. I've never used this before and I was hoping some of the minor gaps and scratches would be filled by it. And it seems to have done that a little bit, but not a lot. There's still a fair bit of imperfection there. Obviously my filling work wasn't quite perfect, and at the moment I don't really care. Depending on how I feel, I can always go back and further fill and sand any bad spots later. Priming a model is a good way to help you see any flaws. Though that's not the reason I primed these. I just didn't really like the way they looked with all the green patches. Priming also helps to bring everything together and make it look more complete. So, how do I feel about these models? Well, they're okay, and I definitely had my doubts at various points through the build. They're obviously not perfect, far from it, and anybody that was expecting them to be perfect is probably insane. It is an old kit and it definitely shows, but it could certainly be worse. It's not especially detailed, and I'm sure there are plenty of people who would angrily call it the worst shit ever, but that seems a bit extreme to me and your expectations are probably a little bit high. I don't think even the newest kits in this scale are going to have perfect, extremely fine detail, though I'm sure they would be of a higher quality than this. It's an okay representation of the ships named on the box, just not perfect. I am hoping that paint will improve the way these models look though. Weathering and paint trickery might be able to hide some of the imperfections. I guess the point in making these videos isn't really to show the best models ever or something like that. More that their purpose is to show what the model is like and how it builds up. Which is why, unlike in this video, I usually don't use putty or fill gaps. In the case of this kit, it seemed like it would be more practical and easier to fill the gaps as I went. The build process was definitely a little bit frustrating at times. That's not to say it was completely unenjoyable, and I was actually quite satisfied that I managed to get it finished. It would have been way easier just to quit and not bother, but I did get there, and I only ended up breaking one of the guns, which is probably pretty lucky. They're really quite fragile. Maybe we can pretend the one I broke is recoiling. I guess really this was kind of a walk down memory lane for me though I don't really have any memory of what building this was like when I was a kid. I only remember that I did build it. I guess that's not really a walk down memory lane, is it? Oh well. It was a cheap kit and the Ark Royal is a pretty interesting ship, so I'm happy. What do you think of this kit? Let me know in the comments section below. And of course if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media and watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. There are links to all of those things in the description below. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, stay excellent and thanks for watching. Farewell.